Welcome to Session 2 of Digital Storytelling and Presentations. This one is about creating quality presentations. Creating a quality presentation, there are some things to consider. There are many, many resources with different information about how to create a quality presentation. This is just one school of thought, but I definitely agree with it. Simplify. Keep your presentation simple. If you have too much information on a slide, it doesn't make sense. Stick to one idea per slide or per page. One concept that's really going to stick in their minds. That's very important. Also, your information needs to be emphasized. So you don't want to have slides that take forever. So to be honest with you, a lot of the things I'm doing in my presentation for you guys wouldn't be considered a quality presentation. But mine is more of a tutorial information than just a straight presentation. So I get a little leeway. So each slide should take under 30 seconds. Some people say three seconds, some people 10 seconds, but you want to boil your idea down that exists on one slide to one concept and one thought. You also want to designate your elements. You don't want to use random design elements to take away the focus from what you are presenting. And you also want to have empathy for the audience. You don't want to have your audience feel not connected. Your goal is to build a message between you and your audience. So those are some basic things to think about when you're creating a presentation. So if I were following these rules in this presentation, the truth is this slide would probably be broken up into four different slides. A simplify, an information needs emphasis, a designate elements, and an empathy for the audience slide. Here are some hints for teachers when you are creating a presentation for your students. They will be discussed more in depthly in an article you are going to read for this assignment called Eight Tips to Power Up Your Classroom Presentations. There is no limit to the amount of slides you should use. That follows with the previous slide where it talks about one idea per slide. Use visuals, but use visuals that make sense and follow your information. You want them to use icons to help trigger your student's thought about what your slide is on. Kids are very visual and having an icon or video that relates to what you're talking about will help students remember what you're talking about and emphasize your point. The next one, less is more, is you should not clutter your presentation with extraneous banners and footers and page numbers and different, different distractions. The students don't need to know what page number they're on in a presentation. They need to know the information. So if you're using something besides your text on a slide, it should be something that is vital to your information and isn't some redundant piece like just giving them page numbers. Size does matter. So you want to go big. So you want to make your text and visuals as big as possible and as eye-catching as possible. This helps with the one idea per slide and the no limits to the amount of slides that you're going to use. You want to keep the focus on what you're talking about. So what you can do is you don't want things that are going to distract your students, but if you use things like bullet points to point things out or graphics like an arrow or a circle to put emphasis on what you're talking about. That's a good use of visuals and also 
allows your students to keep focus on what you're talking about. Now transitions. Transitions can be a big debate. Some schools of thought are for you to use the same transition. Some schools of thought say vary your transitions because if you use the same transition, it sometimes lulls the kids and they're not paying attention anymore. If you grab them with a different transition, that helps keep them focused. And what I like to call rinse and repeat. It's okay to repeat your information on more than one slide. You might be coming back and reminding your kids about something you talked about earlier, or you might want to emphasize a point. So that's important too. Very, very important. Too much information. You don't want to overwhelm the students. It does say, you might say, well, there's no limit to the amount of slides, but that's to get your point across. So you want to be very careful when you're thinking about a presentation that you're giving your students. What do the students need to get from the presentation? What are the main ideas? Do you possibly need to split something into multiple presentations so you don't overwhelm the students? So those are all the things that you can think about. Tips for students are different than tips for teachers because the purpose of presentations for teachers and students can be different. But you can follow both rules for students and teachers depending on what the presentation is. And there is no presentation police that's going to come into your classroom and arrest you if you don't follow all the tips. These are just suggestions. With students, research comes first. It is about the process, the research, the content, not just the product. So you need to make sure you emphasize that with the students, that it's not all about the bells and whistles of the presentation tool. It's what is the content they're trying to present. Students should just use key phrases for important information. It is supposed to be a visual aid. It is not supposed to be a written representation script of all the information that they've researched and they want to share. So for students, you want to say less is more with text. Once again, focusing on main ideas and using maybe three sub points to emphasize that main idea. Another suggestion for students is saying one slide per minute. So that can kind of pace them. You don't necessarily want to say use as many slides as possible. You want to give the kids some kind of guidelines as to what's the range of amount of slides you want them to use. So you don't end up with a presentation that's 45 minutes long. You also have to teach the students to decide what is the important information to emphasize and present. Students should pick a clear layout that is easy to follow. So things should be where the people who are watching it expect to find it. A lot of the times the bottom of your slides can't be seen in back rows. So keep important things front and center. And don't vary your layout of different slides too much unless it makes sense. Use contrasting colors. You do not want to have a dark background with a dark font. You won't be able to read it. It just makes sense. You can have a light background with a dark font. Always look at your presentation and see that you can read the information. I always tell students this. You're trying to get the content across. Even if people can't read the content, it's not a good idea. For students, using a theme, if this applies to PowerPoint, or presentations in Google Slides, a theme provides consistency in terms of background and fonts and colors. So sometimes that's good for students to keep them focused. And also limit the use of transitions and animations. I give students certain requirements. Like I might say you're using one transition or pick from these five transitions. It's the reason why I like Google presentations over PowerPoint because there's less options. And although it's fun to play with transitions, the point of a presentation is, like I said, time and time again, 
sharing some kind of information or content. And you need to have students focus on the content and not all the bells and whistles. So these are the different resources that you are going to go through in order to finish the assignment. The links to these presentations, I mean, sorry, presentation resources also exist on the document about links for session two. So you do not have to worry about clicking on them here because you can't, it's a video. You can click on each one of them and you're going to read these first three articles to do the first part of your assignment. And these last two are just different places where you can find presentation tools. Some of them we cover in this class and some of them we don't. There are hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of tools. And I'm sure there will be many, 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 many more created from in the future. But these were just two good sites that had some tools for your reference. So your assignment is, after reading the articles on creating quality presentations, write a reflection paper that answers the following questions. What should and should not be included in a quality presentation? What is the reasoning behind what should and should not be included? What surprised you about the information you reviewed in the articles? What information was new to you? In presentations you or your students have created in the past, what items have been included that should not have been according to the articles? And as in session one, write your reflection and turn it into a moto in one of the three ways, a Word document, a Google document, or type it directly into Edmodo.